It's 2020 and everyone's getting into that trend of dark mode, whether it's your favorite website like YouTube or Twitter or your favorite app. But one of the things I've noticed is that while apps can detect whether you're using dark mode or not, websites don't. And it's actually very easy to implement. I'm going to show you how to use CSS to implement it, very similar to how you do media calls for responsive designs. So a quick note before we get started. While I said that you can implement this like media calls, as you know, IE is sometimes a little bit behind the curve. They don't specifically allow for this CSS property just yet, but I'm sure the support will be added as more people use it. The CSS property we're going to take a look at is called prefers color scheme. It's a Boolean, which usually means that it's either true or false, but in this case, it's light or dark. When we apply this to a media call, we can actually update the website live, similar to how you do responsive design. And by doing so, we can actually swap between light and dark mode. Now, if a user doesn't have a preference set, then obviously these don't take effect. But if they do, then it's very useful for it to automatically detect. We can have a look at some ways that we can implement this, and we can have a look at some ways we can override this as well. So if you're ready to get started, if you like this kind of content, hit likes, hit subscribe, and let's just jump right into it. Here, we have a completely fresh page. There's nothing on here besides maybe pulling in bootstrap and pulling in styles.css. We'll start adding elements to this page and we'll use these later to swap over from light and dark mode. Let's create a title. We'll put in h1 tag with dark mode. Underneath, we'll add maybe an element. We'll create an article tag and in here, maybe we'll put a div tag with a image uh, class maybe a h2 title tag saying how to implement dark mode and maybe another p tag saying this tutorial will show you how to Im add dark mode to your websites and apps great uh, with that done we can jump into the styles.css and we can start styling this for the article, let's add maybe a display block, uh, inline block, and then we'll do a background color of maybe FA, 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 which is a light gray, and maybe a small border at the top, maybe something like border uh, top is two pixels, solid A. Great. Uh, maybe we'll add a border radius of about four pixels maybe about eight just to make it a little bit neater and we'll add some padding maybe about 12 pixels and maybe a margin of about 12 pixels finally we'll add our image tag in here we'll put in a height of maybe 100 pixels maybe 200 and we'll do a background color of maybe something a little bit darker uh, that should be all right We'll add a margin to the bottom of maybe about six pixels or maybe about 12. And finally for the article, let's add a box shadow as well. We'll do box shadow uh, 0, 4, 2, 0, RGBA. And this will just be a classical border shadow. It might be a bit too heavy there, so I'll do that as a 0.15. Uh, and then let's make this two pixels and this four pixels. So if we take a look at that, that's, you know, a very standard box. We could add a tint at the top there, by making it blue, for example, uh, or maybe a nice red color, which is my favorite FF4800. So that looks pretty good. Uh, we could probably add a background image in there as well. Let's also add a button in here. Uh, maybe we'll have an A tag and the class we don't need a class in this case and we'll just do read more we'll quickly style this down here let's do background and this could be ff4800 uh, color can be white padding 12 pixels and border radius maybe six pixels great so now we've got a nice button in there. Um, let's make this actually a lighter gray and maybe a little bit darker there. That looks good. So we've got our interface now and we've got a couple of elements we can actually have a look at styling. Finally, I wanna throw an image in here just so it looks a little bit more tidy. Let's create the image class here and do background. Actually, we already have one. I think it's down here, yep. 
let's do background image URL. And I've added one in called light.jpg. And let's make background size is cover. Great, that looks okay. And background position center. And maybe also background repeat will be no repeat. Great. All right, it's time to have a look at the value that makes all the magic happen. It's called prefers color scheme, and you use it inside of a media call, similar to how you do responsive design. Let's call at media and pass in prefers color scheme. In this case, I'm gonna put in dark. Now we're gonna put in a CSS attribute of background is black. Immediately the website has updated. That's because I'm running dark mode. So let's apply some more styling and see what happens. So I'm gonna start copying this all over the place because it's really easy to set up. In just a few seconds, I can copy it down here into the article and maybe make the background a very dark gray. Then I can copy it into the A tag and the color for that, I can actually make a little bit different. Let's make it white this time and let's make the text uh, black. Next, let's see if we can update the text in the article as well. Uh, probably want a white text, which looks much better. And finally, let's see if we can also update the picture, which would be pretty cool if you could do in media calls. And this makes it easy. Let's simply copy background URL and change this to dark. Great, look at that. Um, finally, the only thing we have left to change is maybe the H2 tag, uh, which isn't currently set. Sorry, the H1 tag. So let's just make that white. And there we go. We've got a completely dark mode version of the website now. All right, the moment of truth. Let's see if our website actually works and updates to light mode when we swap it in the OS. Looks like that worked, which is cool. It's actually updating faster than the OS had a chance to. So now we can swap between the two and the website updates live. We don't have to hit any additional toggles or find any settings. So just a few things to note before we finish up. Preferred color scheme also has a light mode version. So we could set that here by setting in light. This will only apply if someone's got the light mode enabled, but in some cases, someone might not have light or dark mode enabled. They just might be running default or automatic. In those cases, we can just fall back here and set a command for a global variable in the body tag. And none of these variables for prefers color scheme will apply if nothing has been selected. And also when we swap color schemes, you might've noticed that the colors instantly changed and snapped into position rather than just having a nice transition. That's because they're using the CSS variables. So we can add animations in there as well. For example, we could go here into the article and put a transition in. And for this, we could do maybe uh, ease all for 0.5 seconds. If we apply this and then change color schemes, we'll notice that there is a transition for that box element. Whereas the background isn't, it's immediately changing. If we apply this CSS variable to all of the elements, then we can have a more smooth transition between modes. Let's apply these in and let's see the differences now when we swap modes. Now we've got a much more smoother transition and it feels a little bit more natural. It's probably not necessary, but it's one of those little nice to haves that make the website feel and look a little bit better. And as mentioned before, be aware of the browser compatibility. While Microsoft doesn't allow for it in Edge and Internet Explorer, most of the other browsers do. And I think by using it more often, it'll force Microsoft to start implementing it into their browsers. Also, if you run React or React Native, I would definitely recommend taking a look at styled components. They're a great library that helps you do styling and they sort of do CSS and JavaScript, which sounds strange, but it's actually very useful with great features. They're used by some of the biggest companies such as Google and Reddit and even GitHub. They have some great toolings and you can create a theme that you dynamically set all your properties in and you can swap to dark mode even easier than what you're doing now in CSS. I've done videos on how to use them for both React and React Native and I'll link them to the description as well as at the end of this video. So if you wanna know more about them, just click on those. I hope this video has given you a good idea of how easy it is to implement light and dark mode, even if you don't have libraries like styled components. If you like this kind of content, if you want more like it, hit like and hit subscribe because it really lets me know what kind of content you guys want. Thank you.